Hey everybody, this is Jerry Sargefield and Cleo. Hmm? And um, I'm doing this to to respond of uh, the leader of the Hummingbirds. Um, video uh tara which we are really good friends with and i am blessed to be friends with um she she is a good friend uh landlord and everything she's our advocate she used her contacts to help us to get on H or me at least right now. Uh, Catherine is um, Catherine is in the process, and um, H is a disability. Is disability? Yeah, H is for like disabilities. Um, and and people that are handicapped. The <laughs> I don't usually talk about something like this about my schooling and what it was like in elementary school, stuff like that. I started going to school in the eighties. And um, <clears throat> in New Brunswick, it wasn't the best of experiences for me in school. I was very slow at writing things down on the board. Very, very hard for me to learn, uh, academically at least. And... What you gotta understand is, back in the 80s, even 90s, it was very hard for people to teach uh, those with learning disabilities or dyslexia, which I have, because they didn't know what it was, or even how to uh, teach. Um, up until about grade two, I was a part of a classroom all the time. I tried my best, but I was picked on because I wasn't as fast or academically bright. Though my grade one teacher, Mrs. Madison, did try to encourage me. So did Mrs. Caldwell. Um, so did Mrs. Kenny, grade three teacher. Um, and, you know, some uh, other teachers. But as I hit grade three or so, um, I was given a teacher's aide. Basically, she was in charge of me uh, pretty much all day. They took me out of the classroom, put me in a room that was probably I don't know, 16 eight to 16 feet long, uh, four to six feet wide, uh, basically a storage closet. Uh, the only light that I had was the sunroof that uh, led up to the roof.
Um, I you know, I loved Mrs. Thompson. She was an amazing teacher. And she worked with what she had. She worked with what they allowed her to teach me. But she was a very inner, innovative teacher. Um, she had hands that were very stern, but very loving. And man, could she ever bring out the best in you. She would take me out for walks, nature walks, and everything else. Teach me that way. And then later on, take me to the classroom and give me a test on what I learned. She was the kind of teacher, kind of woman that observed. And thanks to her and other teachers like her, they got together and went to the school board and basically educated the school board or the parents board or whatever they're, you want to call it because back then the parents um, had control <clears throat> along with the New Brunswick of Education. And things got started getting better. It took a while, but by the time I was in, um, by the time I was in middle school, uh, Fundy High, which is known as Gateway to Hell for a good reason. There, can you give me a drink of water, please? And um, there was. Uh, a teacher, but basically it was still a, cl a closet. We were still uh, surrogated. Some teachers did pick on me. Um, one uh, teacher named Bruce Eagles. Later on, he became, he got indicted and sent to uh, prison for uh, embezzlement. Uh, taking uh, the cafeteria money and gambling with it and the student uh, resources and gambling with that too. So, there. can you open it please? Just one second. <laughs> Well, he uh, picked on me a lot. He actually took me by uh, by the throat. And because I showed him up in class and wouldn't um, submit to his bullshit teaching, his brainwashing, and literally uh, went up in front of the class and explained why, step by step. Stuff that I learned at the museum. Uh, I did a lot of stuff with museum curators when I was younger, uh, hands on. And the stuff that um, he was teaching us in social studies didn't add up. And especially the culture, which I was t uh, taught very well, which was Egypt and Japan. And he did not like it that I knew the subject. Someone uh, in his eyes was retarded. And I hate using that word. Was that a, he literally said one time, because he did some kind of tests of how smart people were, IQ tests. He said that a thousand monkeys uh, would be able to do better on the IQ test than I could. 
So to him, I was less than a human. And he wasn't the only teacher that uh, treated, treated me that way. And he took me by the throat uh, after class, kept me alone. And he took me by the throat and pushed me and slammed me, actually. Um, slammed me against the chalkboard. And threatened me. What he didn't know is I had a knife in my pocket and I was ready to use it. I was two steps from losing my temper. Now, I was about six foot one at that time, six foot two. And he was probably six six, six seven. He used to be a football player. And um I was in martial arts. So but uh that teacher made my life hell. Just like at the time, the head principal Blaine Hat and Mr. Mersro and Mr. Hare and which were the principals, they let the old money do whatever the heck they wanted to those kids that are like me. And if we fought back, we were the ones that were suspended. I remember being tied to a flagpole, stripped down, and at the time I was incontinent, I was in a diaper. And the kids whipped me. There's three particular bullies, Frank Rouchard, Eric Levesque, and three others, but those three others uh, later on in life came to me and apologized to me. And um, but Eric Levesque and Frank Rouchard was the worst. They were basically um, the leaders. But they whipped me to where I was bleeding on in my back and everything else. And to humiliate, humiliate me even more, they hauled me up onto the flagpole. Quite high, uh, probably 15 feet. There was a teacher, Richard Ford, that seen this and uh, took me down and he was he was mad he went in to the school and ripped half the teachers a new butthole including uh, Blaine Hat. a year after the year following Blaine Hat was no longer there wonder why Or no, two years after, he was no longer there. But there was other teachers that learned, that was there, that was teaching us, so it was amazing. Richard Ford realized that by me playing darts, I was able to do math and I didn't realize what I was doing. 
and I'll always be I'll always be grateful for that. Two years later, he passed away of a of a massive heart attack on the same day that me and him was supposed to play a big, big dart tournament. I feel like I let him down because I didn't graduate. <laughs> There's also Mrs. Rayner. Cookie Madison, Sherry, um, Dan Vallis, Mr. Proctor, Jim Proctor. They taught me a lot of valuable skills. A lot of valuable skills that Mrs. Potter and uh, the one who helped her, um, I can't, uh, Mrs. Boom, I believe that was her n uh, name. Forgive me if it wasn't, <laughs> if you guys are watching this. But those teachers really impacted me. Mrs. Owls and other teachers, I can't remember them all. Especially Mrs. Whoopi. Yeah, we had a lot of a lot of jokes at her expense at times. But she she gave as good as she got. <laughs> of course she was the gym teacher, so let's just say if you didn't want to do uh laps, you stayed on her good side. <laughs> especially Especially death sprints. Ugh. But, um... <sighs> Eventually I quit school. Same day that Columbine happened, I was gonna be doing the same thing. And I ended up getting sick. And I seen it on TV. And, um,. Let's just say reality kicked in and the impact that it, it made on me. And it and it petrified me what I was about to do. Up until Columbine High, I didn't even really think much past that, the, what I was going to do. But I, I didn't do it. I made the decision to quit school. During that time, a lot, a lot of my friends that were disabled uh, committed suicide or was murdered. And the cops just covered it up. Oh, well, we don't have enough evidence or 
there's uh, not enough uh, not enough to go on to make an investigation and it's not worth our resources why because we were disabled we deserved it or something But what's horrible is it's still going on in these schools. It's still going on all over this place. All over Canada, it's still going on, and it shouldn't be. We have enough resources. We have enough understanding about disabilities People with disabilities should not be getting discriminated against. I'm high functional. If you look at me and see and see me, you're like, nah, he's just fat. If he lost weight, he could do anything he wanted. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, he eats too much. Well, if you had a brain, you'd be dangerous. Or if you knew how to use it, you'd be dangerous. I barely eat very much. It's the lack of resources to being able to get healthy food. That's keeping me this way. Not me eating unhealthy because I want to. <clears throat> you know, I'm, I am still incontinent. So is my wife. She's diabetic. And other things. I just got on H. Not because I wanted to, because I had no choice. Anyways, if you guys are still watching, thank you. Share and like, and subscribe to my wife, please. Since this will be on uh, her uh, page. Be blessed. And um, when you see someone that has a disability, would you please be more respectful? Try to understand them before judging us. Be blessed.